Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science and today I'm going to answer the question, do cosmetics actually work? Well, let me start with a very simple way of explaining the answer to this. Is your hair clean? Are your teeth clean? Do you smell good? Well, then clearly they're doing something. Let's first of all look at what people are expecting a cosmetic to do. Cosmetics are broadly defined around the world as substances used to maintain the appearance. The true definition is a little more wordy than that, but that is the point of what a cosmetic product is used for. Now, the lines get blurred a little when you see all of these active cosmetics with claims like visibly reduces the appearance of wrinkles by up to 20% within 28 days. And that's the type of thing I'm going to look at in this video because I get asked a lot, do cosmetics work? Well first, let's take a look at penetration of cosmetics because we don't necessarily want all chemicals to penetrate the outer layers of our skin. And if you've watched my other video on skin absorption, you'll also know that not many substances actually penetrate the skin at all anyway. So first of all, let's talk about the stratum corneum. Now this is the very outer layer of your skin. It's a few layers thick and we don't really want a lot of substances to get past the stratum corneum anyway. So when we apply moisturizers or straight oils, a lot of the oil sits on the surface of the skin. The water of course sits on the surface of the skin. What happens when you drop a bead of water on your skin? It sits there, it doesn't penetrate at all. So when we put oily substances on our skin, now I'm talking about mineral oils, plant oils, natural does not mean safe, synthetic does not mean harmful. Let's just talk about oils in general. When you apply them to your skin, they will mostly stay on the surface of your skin. But we want this because by sitting on the surface of the skin, they help protect against something called transepidermal water loss. Now this is water loss that occurs every day. And if it's allowed to occur more than the amount of lipids or oils we're putting on the skin, you'll get dry and flaky skin. So we apply moisturizers so that we are applying oils to our skin and therefore we not only provide some suppleness and moisturizing conditioning agents to the surface of the skin to help with that dryness, but we also provide a nice protective oil layer on top of the skin that helps protect from further transepidermal water loss. So do cosmetics work? Tick. We've already ticked one box about how to maintain the healthy appearance of the skin and some suppleness and some youthfulness to our skin simply by keeping the moisture in the skin that would otherwise be lost. Now, we might also want some colorants to apply to this very outer surface of the skin too. FDNC and DNC colorants get used to stain the very outer layers of the stratum corneum. They don't penetrate further than that, but this is ideal when we're looking to create skin tanning products with an instant color. Now those stratum corneum cells will shed off within two to three days. So we will lose all staining effect within two to three days and those colorants don't penetrate further than that. So next, what if we wanna get some substances slightly deeper? Well, we may want to penetrate to the mid layers of the epidermis, the stratum granulosum, and your osmolytic substances like glycerin, propylene glycol, your humectants such as sodium PCA, they will penetrate to the stratum granulosum relatively easily because they're osmolites. Now, osmolites are humectants, which means they hold water within that layer of the skin. Now, this is great because when you hold water in that particular part of the skin, you have an improved suppleness to the appearance of the skin. It also helps protect from drying, which we talked about with the stratum corneum and that transepidermal water loss. But the other great thing about using osmolytical substances in formulas is they can help pull some actives to the mid layer of the epidermis. We often see as chemists extracts that come in glycerin, pentylene glycol or butylene glycol bases. And guess what? Those osmolytic substances help pull those extracts to the mid layer of the epidermis, the stratum granulosum. 
So we're getting suppleness from the osmolytic substance and we're getting activity from the plant extract. But again, we're still just at the stratum granulosum level. But what if we want more activity than that? Well, I've got to tell you, I'm a big fan of peptides used in cosmetics. And again, I'm talking about substances that are approved for use. Peptides are extremely small substances. They're also quite biomimetic, which means they will travel if you have them in a good amphiphilic base with osmolites present to the deeper layers of the epidermis. And that is the stratum basale. Now, when you get a substance to the stratum basal, it may penetrate through to the dermis, but only in really small quantities, or it may trigger off communication channels in what we call the dermal epidermal junction. Now, this is where we start to see inhibition of melanin synthesis. We start to see collagen synthesis. These are only a very few substances that can actually penetrate this far and they have loads of safety data behind their use. There's also loads of clinical evaluations to prove that they work when applied topically in a cream or similar cosmetic substance. So we're talking about safe substances and only a few that penetrate deep enough to have this activity with big safety profiles and clinical efficacy to prove that they work. Here is a video example promoting Munapsis by LipoTru. Now this is just one of many hundreds of different cosmeceutically active ingredients that are out there. But in this video, you can see how they're demonstrating that their material helps block binding and snare complex formation, which is normally required for muscular contraction. In other words, leads to the formation of expression lines. So by blocking that binding ability, it helps limit the muscular contractions that can form and therefore reduces the expression lines that can form. You can also see other clinically evaluated data and before and after imagery that shows how effective this particular active is at reducing fine lines and wrinkles over time. So there's a lot of science that goes into the development of these cosmeceutical actives once you've got them to their required delivery site. So as chemists, we get told about these materials and how they work at the cellular level to create the cosmeceutical benefit. Remember, we're talking about appearance-based changes here to fit within the cosmetic definition. So I often get asked by people, well, hey, how come the supplier can tell you how those substances work, but I never see this in the marketing material for the cosmetic? It's got to do with that cosmetic definition. Remember, cosmetics are broadly defined as substances that are used topically to help improve or maintain the appearance of the skin or hair. So we can't be talking about what is happening at a cellular or physiological level to market or sell a product. Remember, anything we say or do in connection with the promotion, whether it's intended or not to sell a finished product, is considered by the regulators advertising. And if we're going to advertise a finished product, we have to comply with all the regulations. And the overarching principle is it must comply with that definition of a cosmetic, which means it must be appearance-based and not talk about the physiology of the cell or any cellular changes. So as a chemist, I will see full collagen synthesis roots or how whitening agents inhibit melanin synthesis, but I can't put that in any marketing communications to the consumer because the product then wouldn't comply with the definition of a cosmetic. Now, the final thing I normally get asked is, well, Belinda, if some of those really small substances can penetrate, how do we know that other substances are safe to use and how do we know that they've been checked? Well, again, it comes down to regulations. 
Cosmetic chemicals are tightly regulated and checked to ensure safety for the consumer. I have another video all about skin absorption, but if you don't wanna watch that and just wanna skip ahead, let me remind you that there's over 1,300 chemicals that are not permitted in cosmetics to ensure safe use by the consumer. And a lot of them are those pharmaceutical agents you asked me about, which aren't allowed to be used in cosmetic products in the first place because of their pharmacological activity. So when a cosmetic chemist is looking at providing a product, we're looking at what does that product need to do. Now some products just need to cleanse the surface of the hair and skin. We use foaming agents or other agents to help remove surface oils and dirt. A lot of other products to help restore moisture and protect against transepidermal dermal water loss only need to sit on the surface of the skin so that they can protect against water loss that would normally occur. Or we might use some osmolites to help get penetration to the mid layer to boost extra suppleness, extra condition of the skin, and of course the surface oils then protect against any transepidermal water loss. Or we might have a highly active cosmeceutical ingredient that's been proven to be safe and proven to work in its cosmetic application. And those are the substances we look at extra delivery methods to make sure they get to the site they need to go to get your performance from your cosmetic product. Cosmetics don't need to penetrate the skin to get great results. In fact, most of them don't. But all we really need is to get the ingredients to where they need to go to give you the benefits you're looking for. I hope you enjoyed this concise summary of Do Cosmetics Work? Give it a thumbs up and leave any questions or comments below. Make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos and feel free to ask me questions that you might like to see answered in future videos. Happy formulating!